God says in the book of Malachi, He says, I am the Lord that change it now. The word tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of my words will pass away. God has put his word above his name. He did not change it in the heavens for the angels to rebel against him. He did not change it for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He did not change it for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And certainly today and forever, he will not change his word. For whatever he has said, he's going to bring it to pass. I want to talk a little bit to this morning or today and get rid of the I in you and replace it with Jesus. Get rid of the I in you and replace it with Jesus. Now what do I mean by getting rid of the I? I simply mean the flesh. I simply mean self, you, yourself, the sinful nature that we inherited from Adam then why should I get rid of the self, you may ask? Why do I get rid of the I in me or you? Why should I crucify the self-life? But I'll tell you the truth. If you do not get rid of the I in you, it will destroy you. The flesh is the ground and root of all sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The I always stand between you and God as enemy. The I separates us from our relationship with God. But if you want God to come into your life, then you must move out. You must get out of the way. You must crucify the self-life, the I in you. You must modify the deeds of the flesh and God will justify you and declare you righteous when you accept Jesus in your life. The devil will use the eye in you. He will use the human nature, sinful human nature. He's going to use the self. It was the eye that caused man to be in a fallen state today. That's why we are in a fallen state today because of the eye. A sinful state that we are in separated from God. We go back into the Garden of Eden. We see how Lucifer, how Lucifer worked, uh, uh, how Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, come down in the Garden of Eden and how he used the human side of Eve to deceive her. It was the eye in Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It was the self in Nebuchadnezzar, the pride of Nebuchadnezzar that caused God to take away the kingdom of Babylon from him and make him to understand and to know that God rules in the kingdom of man and take it away and give it to whosoever he will. The Bible tells us of a man called Saul, a member of the Sanhedrin Council, a Pharisee, a man who persecuted the church of Jesus Christ. One day he desired letters from the Sahindran Council, permission to go and kill Christians and bring them in, put them into prison. But as he was proceeding along the way to Damascus, he was struck down by a bolt of lightning and became blind. And he heard a voice speaking to him, Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? Notice the word me. He didn't say Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest the church? He said Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? If you touch the church, you're touching Jesus and that's a dangerous place to be. Very dangerous. Because Jesus will fight for his church. This tells me if you touch a church, you touch Jesus and you can be confident about that. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you unto the end of the age. 
In good times, I will be with you. In bad times, I will be with you. When you are in trouble, I am going to be a present help in the time of trouble. And you have to believe that and be confident in the one that you are serving. David declared, yet do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall be be with me, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Jesus turned around Saul, just one touch and one, one work in his life, and he's, he turned him around from Saul into Paul, the apostle who preached the gospel of Jesus to the then known world, and his epistle is written, or they're written now, as the revealed word of God. But Saul was full of himself. Full of the eye in him when Jesus confronted him. And then, and then the eye was crucified and became Paul who replaced the eye with Christ. You want to be a disciple? Then there are some requirements. The first thing you must do, you must deny yourself or get rid of the eye in you. The second thing is you must take up the, your cross Daily, every single day, not conveniently. Follow Jesus is a choice. God is not forcing you to follow him. To be a disciple of Jesus is a choice. Not forced. He's saying, if, and if you make the choice, if you really listen to me and you make the choice to follow Jesus, then you must do these things. These, are, these two things are the requirements. Deny yourself. Self-denial, crucify the I in you. What it means to deny self? It's simply, it is simply denying and, or refusing to follow our own human will. Every man that decreases the I in you and increase with Jesus will be great in the kingdom of God and even greater than John the Baptist. That's what the Lord is saying here. Get rid of the eye, get rid of the eye and decrease yourself and allow Jesus to take control and increase in you. You're going to see what God can do in your life. Take up the cross and follow me daily. That's what Jesus is saying. This daily undertaking is not just an occasion like we do. When we feel like it, when it is convenient, so to speak, so we put in it, our time in to actually serve the Lord and take up your cross conveniently. You and I have daily cross that we have to face. Every single day that we are in a fight, in a battle, the battle of desires, the battle against the flesh. Every single day you have to crucify first the flesh. The flesh is your number one cross that you have to face every single day. The I in you, the self must be crucified daily, every single day. Then there are the crosses from the outside that you have to face. The crosses of persecution, the crosses of troubles, the crosses of, of tribulation and all the outside interference that we have to face. But Jesus comforts us. He says, in this world, my friend, you shall have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Every cross from inside and every cross from the outside, we are well able to overcome. For we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord deliver us out of them all. Oh. 